So here's the deal. If you want to be strong and healthy, you have to eat your vegetables. You have to eat your vegetables. If you eat your vegetables, you'll appreciate the rest of the meal more. Right now, we're standing in the dessert part of the video. But before you get here, you have to watch the rest of the video. It's broken down into four parts. The install, cleanliness, applications, and then durability. I can't wait to see you here, but you have to eat your vegetables first. We're waiting for you. everyone, thanks for stopping by the channel. My name's Jude, welcome back. Today's video is all about demystifying the mystery of the floor box. Now every one of our sound systems has something like this. This is an input transducer, a microphone. This is what's taking my acoustic energy and transforms it into an electrical signal. That signal carries itself down the cable and then connects into something like this. This is a three pin XLR mic jack. We've seen these mounted on a bunch of different apparatuses. Here's a traditional stainless steel one gang faceplate with our Switchcraft D3F. I don't know how many of these I've installed. Same version, two D3F Switchcraft jacks. Now today, if I have to do this, I like to use this. This is a black version, same options, but the black hide a lot better in today's decor. Black's available in one gang, two gang quad, four gang quad, quad, quad. There's 12 D size openings. Now what's a D? This is a D series connector. This is a C series connector because of the shape, the C. So our D series comes in a lot of different options. This is our traditional mic jack, so any of our pro audio connectors can fit in a D-series style jack. Here is a speaker level option. Uh, that's speak on. Here's a quarter inch option. They even make these face plates that are blank, so if you have some sort of uh, option that is not available in the D-series, you can make your own D-series connectors. You can even put toggle switches on here and they mount on these openings. But today, I wanna to talk about the floor box. This isn't your grandmother's sound system. This is our sound system. So let's make this as best as we can. This is the Mystery Electronics floor box. FMCA 2000 series. Now there's a couple different options within the 2000 series. This is the most common option I use. This is the basket of the floor box. The basket holds these moduline insert jacks. Now this is a very typical setup. Uh, XLR, speak on, HDMI, and then an RJ45. Those moduline insert panels sit at an angle below grade in your floor box. This is an awesome way to be able to take all of your low voltage communications and put them below grade to where they're gonna be a lot safer. They also make options where you can have high voltage in here as well. Now the best way to show you how this system works is to show you how I install it. I'm Jude, this is Jared. We're in Halstead, Kansas. Today we're gonna to install a floor box by Mystery. Got two mic jacks, high voltage power, and then we have a monitor jack sitting below in the rise of the step. You can see the outline of the pulpit. And we're gonna take those three devices and put them in this floor box. It would not surprise me if right here, we find a floor joist. And if that's the case, we'll notch it out so that basket can sit right above that floor joist. We're gonna get the power turned off and get after it. This is a cut-in box. So we may not see a floor joist right there. These tabs are what helps hold the J-Box in. There he is, look at what we got right there. There's a floor joist. That's about how our basket's gonna sit. We wanna make sure that we are behind the edge of that pulpit and that this is a self-rimming floor cover, and we wanna make sure that that stays out of that line right there.
Okay. There's no more important rule than to wear these safety glasses. You don't know who said that. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. I have no idea. Oh, that's Norm Abram. Okay. Do you know who Norm is? Nope. <laughs> really? Should I? Yes! He doesn't know who Norm Abram is. Sounds like a president. I don't know. Oh, I can't believe you don't know who Norm Abram is. We're gonna wear earplugs too. Take the saws off and we're gonna notch out that floor joist. If you know anything about Douglas fur, we should be able to just pop that right out now. Shame on this old house. Norm Abram taught me that. The good folks at Mystery Electronics give you a supplemental hardware pack for making a series of different connections into this J-Box. This J-Box gets screwed into the basket by four hex head screws. And we've got a J-Box that's rated for high voltage. You want to turn the breaker back on? Let's get these uh, terminated on this side of the floor box. Here are the jacks for this side. Pulpit mic, future HDMI, and then two speak-ons. There's going to be a floor monitor that will flank each side of the pulpit. Let's get that soldered on and those crimped on. There's the hardware kit, Allen wrench, and those pans will go on the top cover, and then those are for the insert jacks panels and then these are screws if we were installing this basket into a, a back box or a big um, J box. I get impatient. The FMCA 2400 with the duplex kit and the insert panel on the other side. Have you ever taken the opportunity to think about how much dirt we bring into our houses every year? Studies have said that every person will bring in approximately 40 pounds of dirt and dust every year. 
per family. We recently took a trip to see my sister, the mechanical engineer, and we traveled through the Oklahoma City Airport on a United flight, and then 1,600 miles away, I left pig poo in my sister's kitchen, her brand new kitchen. That pig poo came from this farm the morning that we left Oklahoma City. It takes less than one week for dust to come from the African continent to the American continent. So we take dirt everywhere we go. Why is that important with our sound system? This microphone outputs its voltage at 15 millivolts. In comparison, this AA battery is 1.5 volts or 1500 millivolts. This microphone is a little over 100 times less powerful than this AA battery. And when it comes to transporting our audio signals from component to component, we need all the voltage we can get because the lower the voltage, the harder it is to arc across the connectors. You add resistance like dust and dirt, you're gonna cause problems. Now I asked a couple residents to save all of their vacuum suckings for six months. This is about how much we would vacuum up in a year to year and a half in a typical house. Our house, we're vacuuming up a lot more because we live on a farm. Our hair is about 100 microns thick. Dust can be up to one micron thick. Dust can be suspended in the air for up to five days. So if we take the typical household dirt and we use that as our control and say that one year supply of household dirt will last the lifetime of our sound system, this is why it's important. This is your microphone jack. This is your microphone jack on dirt. Any questions? We're at my church, Southwest Baptist Church in Oklahoma City, and I wanted to show you where we placed our floor boxes. This is box number one, and it's in our front steps. Box number one has four XLRs and two speak-ons, and we use this box for when we have our kids' choir. We'll put a left, center, right microphone for the kids' choir, and then if we ever need floor monitors for extra uh, monitoring out here we have those speak-ons. A little uh, side note when we roughed in the back box during the roughing stage I held the box too far back to the rise of this step so I had to trim off the back of this floor box cover just to make it fit to where those holes would line up I'm telling on myself. So that's box number one we got box two three and four. Box number two mainly takes care of uh, instruments and then our floor monitor. It is an FMCA 2400 and it has two Moduline insert panels, four devices there, four devices there. So this gets used for when we have instruments right in front of the piano. Box three is under the pulpit. I will not move it, but it's an FMCA 2400 and it has a couple different options. We have an HDMI jack in that box. This is where uh, you can plug in an iPad or an iPhone and get a feed up to the projector. We have our Sure battery charger for our wireless mics, so it gets powered through that floor box. And then we have our pulpit mic running down to the floor box. Box four is a mirror image of box two. Box number five sits under the grand piano and it is one of two FMCA 3400s. So it's twice as big as the 2400 and four times as big as the 1400. The 3400 allows you to have four insert panels and then each panel can have up to four D-sized devices. So on this side right here we have two speak-ons for our instrument monitors. Both pianos get a different independent mix. We have two RJ45s for any network connectivity or if we ever wanted to add phones. We have a high voltage receptacle right there. And then on this side we have eight XLRs. And when we installed that floor box, that was gonna be mainly for orchestra mics. And then this box here is gonna be where we're gonna pull a lot of our vocal mics from, but that didn't work out. So I installed a little microphone snake that runs back to that box there. 
So our main vocal mics are pulled from this section of the stage out to the pulpit area. So that is box five. Box six is right here, and this is just a bank of XLRs, so we have eight XLRs. Now this just gets used for uh, our orchestra, and then we'll run our orchestra mics right there, and then our orchestra will set up here so we can pull from box six. Box seven does not get used, and it's our only 1400, so that holds one of those Moduline insert panels, which holds four devices. I installed that for uh, phones if we needed that or any other um, video jacks. Box number eight right there is a mirror image of box number six. And then box number nine, this is the other FMCA 3400. This side we have eight XLRs and we've got five set up here. This is for the other mic tree where we have the green, blue, violet, gray, white. We have an XLR input right here. This is a line level output from the organ. So that goes into our sound system for our recordings and our stream feed. And on this side, we have two speak-ons. This speak-on is for the floor monitor for the organ. And then we have another speak-on if we need to have another monitor for the orchestra. We have another line level return from the organ. So we have a stereo feed heading up to the sound. And then on this side, we have a high voltage uh, duplex receptacle. Also, we drilled a big hole. That's a two inch hole right there through the side of the basket. And this is the control wire from the organ that goes up to the organ amp in the organ chamber right there. This box has a lot going on in it. The FMCA, 3400. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Here's some bones. Yeah, you're shaking it up. Oh, I ran over. Okay. My mom told me never to hang out with friends like these. <laughs> <laughs> you got a plumb bob so we can get that name exactly this, so I'm just gonna let it rip. So I recently learned that women can be judgmental and there's a secret code of judgment that they have where they describe people according to different fruit and vegetable types. Now, this is real dangerous, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna entertain this, but I wanna start the same thing with clamps. So us men starting today, we're gonna start judging people according to the different clamp shapes. We have vice grips here with a big pad for clamping down, squeeze clamp, C clamp, F clamp, quick grip, pipe, parallel jaw, and the big boy, the bench vise. So it's time to put the floor box to its maximum limit. Today we're gonna test the average soprano walking on our floor box. Now, uh, I did some common core math and I did some extrapolation using some very fiduciary skills of mine. And what we're gonna to try to do is come up with a conglomeration of the average soprano of our church. So using the different fruit shapes and sizes, we're coming up with the average, I'd hate to come across her. We're coming up with the average soprano of our church. So I think the C clamp best describes this conglomeration of fruit and vegetables. So lucky for us at our church, we have somebody that fits this profile. This is our maintenance pastor, Troy. And so Troy is going to represent the average size and shape of the soprano in our church choir. And I may have gone a little too overboard with facial hair, but we'll, we'll let it play out. We're going to put this floor box to the test. We're going to put it under the weight of Troy, our maintenance pastor, the average soprano in our church choir. And we're going to see what fares better, the floor box or the surface mount XLR. Wow. Does it still open? Yeah, huh? look at that. XLR still firmly seated. Cord's not damaged. Still flat. Good work, okay. So what can you do to this, Troy? Huh. Whoops. Whoa. So right now, Troy is simulating the average maintenance guy on a vacuum cleaner and a mic jack. I don't know how many times that we have to go into churches and take out a mic jack because a vacuum cleaner has uh, had its way. Whoops. 
I'd say that's pretty. Oh, it won't lock in now. <laughs> okay, so looking at the two XLRs, uh, this uh, certainly has um, not done well, not as well as the floor box. Troy has just represented the average soprano of our church. Thank you, Troy. It was good. This is super fan C. Culver, and he's also a super friend. Since the average soprano didn't hurt the floor box, now we're gonna drop my service body truck onto the floor box. This is gonna simulate a whole herd of sopranos. And it's always good to have a friend with a big jack. This truck weighs about 12,500 pounds. The back axle fluctuates anywhere from seven to 8,000 pounds of weight. So we're gonna be slowly lowering the truck down on the floor box. On the box, it might hurt. <laughs> the engineer says this isn't gonna hurt the box. Oh, well, we broke part of the OSB up front. Okay, so she held. She held the weight of a herd of Sopranos. But now the real test, can the floor box handle an entire choir? We're gonna find that out. Well, I mean, believe it or not, the lid still opens just fine. So the OSB is actually what started to give right there cracked because of the weight of the truck and everything else is holding we're now going to drop the entire church choir on top of the four box we're using our road bus this may look familiar this is what monica and i went through arby's on a date video is linked up there okay So what are the takeaways of this video? We learned that keeping the jacks below grade helps keep them a lot cleaner. We can dump a lot of material on top and the jacks below grade under a lid at an angle helps keep the material outside of the jacks. We learned that the functionality of the box is almost unlimited. We can put high voltage power, the low voltage audio, low voltage video, or pretty much any other combination that will fit in that D size opening. The possibilities are almost unlimited. And then on our durability test, we learned that this box can take it on its chin and keep going. That bus tire was probably close to 10,000 pounds crushing down on the lid of the box. And it needs to be noted, the box did not come apart. The box did not break. The box did not fail. Sure, the lid's bent, but it's still intact. It's actually the OSB where it was attached to the floor joist. That's what started to fail. The lid still opens and the mic plug is still plugged into the jack on the box. So if you're interested in a floor box like this or some of the other options, check out mysteryelectronics.com. Look at all their different options and then all the different insert panels that can go inside these floor box. You'll never regret investing money into a good floor box. My name's Jude. Thanks for watching. And this is my sound advice.